Hi, I'm Denise Gagne, and I'm going to take you through Pre-K Lesson 18, the lesson for the third week of January. Now, this is the classic site, musicplayonline.com, and I'm in online learning, but today I'm going to go to the beta site, to learning modules. Our beta site is our new site, and as we rebuild, we're hoping that you'll uh, give it a try. So our concepts are here. If there's more concepts than there's space, we'll put it in extra details. This is what we'll be doing in the lesson. There's some new, there's some review. As with all things with pre-K, the more you review, the better the students get. Our objectives are given as I can statements. We have supporting resources. And we start, as always, with a welcome song. And for term two, it's it's music time. When we get to spring, we'll be going back to um, it's music time. So the first activity is learn the finger play, rule the snowball. And you can do the lyrics video, which just shows you the words and illustrates it. Or you can watch the kids demo, or you can do both. Roll the snowball, roll the snowball, up, up, up. Roll the snowball, roll the snowball, down 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 and then it goes fast slow quiet loud run 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 at the end is really fast um it's fun and it reviews all those basic concepts as in pre-k we do a lot of loud quiet high low up down fast slow then we have an interactive game if you're in person you can put this on your screen put it on your smart board and the up down game is game number nine and in this one we every pattern that we identify correctly the man goes higher up the ladder so that one was going down is that going up or down ask the kids to show you so they have input into the answer and that one's down and if you get them all right at the end he grabs the apple falls off the ladder i'll let you finish the game by yourself so we go out of the game back into our lesson, we sing the letter P song. Letter P says P, letter P says P, P like penguin, letter P says P. So each week there's a new letter in pre-K and lots of weeks we review as well. So we read the Perky Penguin story <clears throat> and um, the story will be in the supporting resources up here in the PDFs will be the Perky Penguin story. And then we sing and move to the song Perky Penguin. And again, the movements are demonstrated here in this, but it's a fun movement song. What do you do if you can't sing in your school? You can still move. So play the songs, do the movements with the kids, and they don't sing along with it. A lot of times in pre-K, they don't sing anyways. So this is just, it's easy to enforce the no singing with um, with little children. Then we do the Penguin March. And again, this is a movement song. It's intended for them to explore different kinds of movement. And so again, you can do that if you're not allowed to sing. If you're allowed to sing, sing along. There's a demo that shows how to do it. Um, we have an optional storybook, and this should be a safe share link to the Tacky the Penguin story, which is a lovely, lovely storybook for kids with Tacky a really good the Penguin message. by Helen Lester, illustrated by Lynn Munsinger. There once lived a penguin. His home was a nice icy land he shared with his companions. His companions were named Goodly, lovely, angel, neatly, and perfect. And I'm going to stop there. So when the penguins march, you sing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's all illustrated in the story. Um, when the pretty penguins sing, I use the melody uh, Twinkle, Twinkle, Sunrise on the Iceberg. And again, that's illustrated in this video. Uh, Tacky's melody. Um, how many toes does a fish have? How many toes does a fish have? How many toes does a fish have? Tacky was an odd bird. And when you get to the hunter's melody, we're gonna catch some pretty penguins and we'll march them with the switch and we'll sell them for a dollar and get rich, rich, rich. When you have the splash, you make a big splash. And I used this instrument to make my big splash. And when the hunters thump, 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 I played on my drum. So this is optional, but honestly, 
pre-K's love story books, they should be an integral part of your pre-K lessons. Now we're moving to Baby Shark, Baby Shark. Um, and again, I showed my movements to this Baby Shark. This version of Baby Shark really lends itself well to movements. It's not the one that got famous, but it's really fun for your little guys. And then we're going to review the letter F and optionally do the letter F worksheets if you didn't do them last week. Um, this I included again because this video of the bunny is absolutely precious where the bunny's he's, actually he's eating the, snowman the snowman's nose. And it'll be so fun for your kids to see that. And then they review the chubby little snowman had a carrot for a nose. And we end with skin and marine. And so that's our pre-K lesson for week three of January. Uh, lots of fun stuff for the kids to do, whether they can sing or they can't sing. There's still lots of good things for them to do in this lesson. I am on musicplayonline.com website. This is the classic site. This is our older version of the website. And I've gone into online learning and selected it. But I'm going to move over to beta dot music play online because our new website i love the format of the learning modules it's um quite nice so i'll go and select kindergarten lesson 18 is at the top and we can see what we're doing so here's the concepts there uh, there is an outline of what we're going to do in the lesson there's penguins and there's button factory and who has the pencil here's our objectives the lesson guide has been written already so we sing the the echoes in um welcome to school everyone to start the lesson and then we learn the chant button factory hi my name is joe and i work in a button factory i have a wife and a dog and a family one day my boss comes up to me he says hi joe are you busy i said gosh no he said turn the button with your left hand and you keep adding hands and feet and head and tongue until you can't do anymore um so there's a demo here that shows how to do it it's fun kids really enjoy it from kindergarten right on up these actually were some older kids but the kindergartens love it the older kids love it too and then we're doing the song who has the pencil so if you're virtual with your students here's an adaptation um, you're going to choose uh, just do do them one at a time so you choose guesser one who sings I have the pencil uh, sorry the guesser is going to guess who sings I have the pencil so the guesser has to hide eyes you point to a student on your zoom that sings I have the pencil and then the guesser has to try and guess who it was you choose a second guesser and you choose a second soloist so um, the guesser will sing who has the book and the person who has it will sing i have the book and then you choose a third guesser and a third soloist and the guesser will sing who has the ruler and whoever has it will sing i have the ruler and the end of the song is open now and look um, in class i would probably do all three at once but on zoom it's just not going to work so adapt it by doing one at a time in person you can choose one guesser for all three items or you could do it this ad ad adaptation if you're allowed to sing if you're not allowed to say the words instead now the game old mother brown is to teach so and me old mother brown had to go to town so it's so me me so so me me so uh, and there's some really good activities uh, for teaching so and me interactively on the website but in this one the fun is just in the game so you sing the song you choose one person to act out and often they act out an animal which doesn't really make sense with the song and that's okay because the kids just like acting things out and then the rest of the class guesses what they were um old mother brown's catching her bus to go to town so it could be a job that she's going to that they act out but little people find it easier to act out animals now we're going to launch the interactive and point to the beat as we sing the song. Old Mother Brown and the beats pulse as you point to them. So you could screen share that with the students. Um, but that's a really good activity for them to start developing 
um, that sense that music has a steady beat. And then depending on where you are in your sequence, you might want to have them clap the words. Old Mother Brown had to go to town. And again, it depends where your kids are. If they haven't done much of this, then you might want to do this with four or five more songs before you do any labeling. But if they are ready, you could go to this. Old, how many sounds is this? It's one. Mother, two. Brown is one. And guess what? There's a box here that has no sound. So you could go on and label this as ta, ti, ti, or do, do, day, or whatever syllables you use. Um, and that's entirely up to you. If you want to, it's given here. But I've put it in as an option because there's a lot of people that don't do notation with their kindergarten students. And then we have, again, an optional. I would only do this if I was in person. This doesn't work well over Zoom. But if you're in person, you could have the students create a four-beat ostinato. And then you divide the class into two groups. One group sings the song while the other group performs the ostinato. So if I decide I'm going to pound on my desk the ostinato, I would start that first and I'd do it two times before attempting the song. So here's the ostinato. Old Mother Brown had to go to town. Miss the bus, although she ran, so has to go as best she can. Whoosh, 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 wow. And I made a mistake at the end there. Uh, it's tricky. It's easier doing it if there's a whole group doing it with you. Um, but that's a good activity in person. Review the penguin polka from last week. If you don't remember the movements, I show you how to do them. And we've had all sorts of interesting modifications posted on the Music Play Teachers group on Facebook. Um, some teachers invited their children to bring stuffies and dance with their stuffed animals. One little girl uh, actually had a stuffed penguin that she danced with that was adorable. Um, to go along with the penguin theme, I have the storybook Tacky the Penguin. And the video link should be in there, actually, because I put it in. But the video link is is there. And the, the story, um, all the suggestions are done in the video. So when the penguins march, we instead, instead of reading one, two, three, four, we sing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And we sing the pretty penguins melody to the tune of Twinkle, Twinkle. Sunrise on the iceberg, sunrise on the iceberg. And we sing Tacky's melody to a, a kind of like drunken sailor. How many toes does a fish have? How many toes does a fish have? How many toes does a fish have? Tacky was an odd bird. And then the hunter's melody. We're gonna pack catch some pretty penguins and we'll march them with the switch and we'll sell them for a dollar and get rich 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 they're really bad guys in this story and when you have the splash you make a splash with voice voices and instruments i use this instrument to make the splash and on the thump 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 uh, play the thumps on a drum, and I did in the story as well. So this is Kindergarten Lesson 18 for January Week 3. I'm Denise Gagne. This is all part of Music Play, and I hope you enjoy this lesson with your This is the third lesson in our series of lessons about Peter and the Wolf. I'm on the classic site, musicplayonline.com. This is our original website. We're building a beta site which is going to be our new site. And so I'm gonna show you the module there. Um, you click on learning modules, you go to grade one, 
and lesson 18 january week three is here there's an overview we're going to learn the peter theme hunters and hunters rifles name the instruments and the objectives of course so that we recognize the themes and we recognize the instruments that are used lots of supporting resources here um, and they're great worksheets are really nice little worksheets so we start by watching peter from uh, the peter and the wolf uh, listing map and then we have a safe share link that takes us to a violinist playing now there's no guarantee that say share links are going to work for everybody in every country. Sometimes they're blocked. For me, it works. I hope it works for you too. If not, Google String Family playing Peter's theme from Peter and the Wolf. So Google it and you will find an alternate. Then we have um, a color or draw Peter and the Wolf sheet. And because not everybody has printers at home, if they're doing this at home, they may have to draw a picture of Peter and maybe they could draw a picture of a violin. If you're in person, of course you can print the worksheet and um, they get some printing practice. The lyrics at the bottom are the tune for the video here. So Peter, there's a little boy so that we've written words that go with the theme and they're sung in that video by a much better singer than I am. Then we watch the hunters arrive and the hunters theme. Um, the hunters theme, I, again, you'll hear it here. If you want to hear an oboist, um, you can click here. There is actually not a live oboist playing in this particular video. It's, um, couldn't find one. And then we color and draw. The hunter's melody is played by the oboe. So again, if kids have a printer at home, they can do this at home. If they don't have a printer at home, invite them to draw the hunter and invite them to draw an oboe and to print those words. And this little song will be in this video. The hunter's march, the hunter's march. And again, by a much better singer than I am. Um, this one does link to a nice video of timpani players playing it. See it here, what those instruments sound like. And then they draw the hunter's rifles and they draw the timpani if they don't have the worksheet. If they do have the worksheet, they get to color those. And at the end of this series of Peter and the Wolf lessons, they're gonna have a lovely little booklet all about Peter and the Wolf. Um, this story is a short version of the story. It doesn't have all the music in it. Uh, but it does review all the instruments that the children have seen to this point. And there's some optional assessment ideas that you can do if you wish. So that's an overview of lesson 18, grade one, and it's Peter and the Wolf lesson three. Next week will be the final Peter and the Wolf lesson. This is the lesson for the third week of January. I'm starting on musicplayonline.com, our classic site, our original website. We are building, rebuilding this site, and you can um, try it out. It's beta.musicplayonline.com. I'm going into the learning module section, and I'm going to select grade two, and here's lesson 18. So concepts start here. The rest of them are in extra details. Here is an outline of what's going to be in the lesson. We're going to do a lot of work with the game Mouse Mousy with adaptations for in-person or for Zoom lessons. How do you play chase games when you can't touch? So that's, um, I've got some ideas for you. We're going to do some more work on Bach and we're going to learn a little bit about the harpsichord. And we're going to review the singing game Oliver Twist because it's fun and it gives us a chance to get up again and move. If you can't sing, you can still move. And so these lessons will work even if you're not able to sing. Virtually, of course, you can do it all. So virtually, I would start with the solfa practice. This is a new solfa practice video. So, so, me, me, Echo do, right do, do. So, so, me, me, do, do, do. So, me, do, so, so, me, do. And the difference with these solfa videos is that everything is going to be in one key. So the kids will really get to know that this is so, me, and do. And then of course, we'll have other sets of videos that are in other keys. 
So we'll start with the note highlights for the mouse mousey song because they've just done so me and do in the ready go sofa video. Mouse mousey little mousey. Pause it, kids sing back. Mouse mousey little mousey. And if you continue on through this video, it will do sulfa highlights as well. So you can have your kids singing in sulfa. Ready go. So me do so so me do so do 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 do. If they don't know sulfa already, just do a measure, pause it, have them sing back. Um, but this is a great way to learn the solfa. And then I've actually asked them to do the solfa challenge. It's really easy to do. So our first note is so. And what will that one be? It'll be a so. If you make a mistake, you lose a star and you hear a funny sound. But if you have all your stars left at the end, it comes down that you've won. Or if you have any stars left at the end, you'll win the game. Um, so this is a great way to get kids reading in Solfa. Now we watch the singing game and it would traditionally be, this is the, um, the mouse who comes around and tags a cat who chases after them. So I've asked the kids to think up ways they can modify but I've given some ideas here. So here I am with a stuffed cat and a little mouse. And I started them at the end of the table. And then I pull up a note card. So if I pull up a quarter note, it's one beat. And so the kitty who, whose card I pulled up moves one beat ahead. The next card is going to be for the mouse. And if it has two taws, he gets to go two spaces. I it's a kitty's turn next. And if I pull up a half note, kitty gets to go two spaces. So I used quarter note, pair of eighth notes, half note. If I pulled up a rest, miss a turn. Now those note cards are given in the supporting resources. So supporting resources are here. These are the note values that I used. So it's a good chance to review half note, to review a tie. You can use Ta, titi, you can use do's, due days, you can use one, one and, whatever note uh, system, whatever rhythm system you use will work. Um, I put this as miss one turn, a half rest, you could have the miss two turns if you wanted, um, but I put in a variety of note values into this. And actually, I think this is a cute way to play the game virtually, and I think it's something that your kids might even want to play at home. Um, we use painter's tape to set up our table to play the game. You could use anything to create your game board. Now, of course, if you're in person and if you're allowed to, you can ch play the chase game and do it. Um, I know in some of our schools in Alberta, if they're outside, they're allowed to tag because this time of year, our kids all have mittens on for a start. Uh, but um, that'll depend on whether you're allowed to or you're not. If you're not allowed to, you could play the game like this in your classroom too. So now we have a copycat. This is one we did in the previous week. Make up movements to the beat and the kids copy you as they go. Um, I have here compose a do mi so melody using the melody composition tool. And we've just practiced do mi so in this key. So this is our so, this is our mi, this is our do. And then, and if you want your students to send you something, have them screenshot and they can send you a screenshot of their composition or they could uh, perform it for you. So the composition is a nice add-on to the Do Mi So practice. Here's another copycat game, this time with Minuet and G. It used to be attributed to Bach. Now they know someone else wrote it. Bach used it in his Anna Magdalena notebook. But again, make movements and have the kids copy or you choose children to be the leaders and they create the movements and the class copies.
Kids like playing copycat. They can make up strange and different movements. You can get them standing up and off the screen. Then we have a safe share link to learn about the harpsichord. This is actually really quite a beautifully done video done for the ABC. A harpsichord is a keyboard instrument in which the strings are plucked by short. small quills. Out of all the keyboard instruments we have, piano, organs, clavichords, and harpsichords, the harpsichord has the... So it's a short video, but it's very succinct and it really teaches. And then uh, to end the class, review the Oliver Twist game because that was fun for the kids. Um, we've got the kids demo first and then the words after. You can use either one or you can show both. So that's an overview of Lesson 18, Grade 2, January Week 3. The focus really in this lesson is on Do, Me, So and the game Mouse Mousey. I'm currently on musicplayonline.com, which is our classic site or our older site. I'm going to shift to beta.musicplayonline.com, our new site. Go into learning modules, choose grade three, and then I'm going to choose lesson 18. Here's a quick overview. And we started Tidio last week and suggested creating movements. I have another idea for Tidio for you. In uh, it's actually not in here, but body percussion substitution. Pass one window, tidy -o. Pass two windows, tidy -o. Pass three windows, tidy -o. Jingle at the window, tidy -o. And I would do a stomp there. Jingling, 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 Joe. Jingle at the window, tidy -o. Jingling, 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 Joe. Jingle at the window, tidy o. And if you can't sing, you can simply do the body percussion and teach them the body percussion for the whole song. So that's a fun way to substitute for the situations where you can't sing. Um, in the previous week, I suggested just creating movements for the song, but I do think the body percussion would be fun. Um, your Zoom kids will love this. It's sing the responses for yum, yum, yum. And the response always is meatballs and spaghetti. And it's just such a silly song. It's a fun song. Your kids are really going to enjoy it. And then head and shoulders, baby. Head and shoulders, baby. One, two, three. Head and shoulders, baby. One, two, three. Head and shoulders, head and shoulders, head and shoulders, baby. One, two, three. So we do the song first. This is me a long, long time ago when I was much thinner and not so great. Um, but this class really had fun with this song. They really enjoyed it. It was an interesting class because it actually was a music class combined with a very um, uh, high needs behavior class and the kids were all really engaged so here's the words to it and what we did at the end of the demo was had student created verses and that's what i'd suggest that you do with it um, if you're zooming with your kids you be the partner to everybody in the class head and shoulders baby one so there's no actual touching there is no partners but you can be the partner in the air with everybody I'd always teach my clapping games like that anyways. This is just how we have to do it this year. Uh, so, and if you can't sing, just do the movements and use the recording. You've got the recording right here. It's simple to use. Review the song Sakura. It was introduced uh, in the previous week. And because it's foreign language, it's going to take a number of weeks if the kids are going to learn to sing it. So what we had done in the previous week, made a paper fan to create movement to Sakura. Um, you could do that again, or if you haven't done it yet, you could do it. And it's really a beautiful song to add these fans to. I've done it in performance. And if you go slowly with this, play a measure, have the kids sing back. Play another measure, have the kids sing back. You could have your students learn to sing the song. And then we continue with our study of Japanese instruments, learning about the shamisen. And it's a plucked instrument with three strings. 
and this is the very short version of it, the video here is a safe share link. The video link is a really good video on the shamisen and it starts out with a puppet theater performance and you need to let your students know that it's going to be loud and different um, than what they might have ever heard before but it's a really interesting performance and this uh, player is gives an excellent overview of how the shamisen is played and what it's played for it's a really excellent video just um, be warned that the first minute of it is going to be loud and a little different so enjoy the uh, the lesson i think you'll really enjoy learning about the shamisen and doing the other activities in this lesson i'm currently on musicplayonline.com this is our original website it's the classic website but i'm going to take you to our new version of the website beta dot musicplayonline.com. I'm going to go into the learning modules. I'm going to select grade four. And here is lesson 18. It's January week three. And in this lesson, we're going to do basketball rhythms again. Those were, uh, we got many reports of teachers saying their students really enjoyed it. Um, we're going to learn to play and uh, sing the notes B and A on a virtual xylophone. What do we do in this year when we can't play recorders? This is always the week that I would have normally started the recorder with my students. So I'm going to try starting it with a virtual xylophone. I've left the notes and the staff in here in case you want to practice doing B's and A's on the staff with your notes. Um, we start with the note name memory game, which is a fun interactive game and it's note name memory is game number four and it's got two levels if i'm doing notes on the staff level one is going to show me where those notes are and i just have to match them level two i have to remember where they are and they're behind the cards i'm not very good at level two so that is the note name memory game uh, then you find a ball to review rhythms. If you don't have a ball, just use hands and do bounce, catch, three, four, bounce, catch, three, four, or bounce, catch, bounce, catch. For quarters, ta, 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 or one, two, three, four. For eights, t, 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 or if you do date, do date, whatever counting system you use. Um, and we've got two audio selections. The first one is nice and it's not so fast. It's fairly slow. The next one is quicker. A little trickier to do those one, two, three, four at that faster tempo. Now we're getting into the music. We've practiced the note names. This is where I would start on the recorder. So if your students do have recorders at home, this could, you, you could simply shift over and teach them. You go into instruments, choose the recorder. You could have them start on the recorder. But if you don't have recorders with your students, but you still want to teach them the content, just be, they could play on the virtual xylophone. Now I can do this on my screen. I can pull my xylophone to one side and I can pull my music to one side and I can play just B on my instrument. B, 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 and then I go a little bit over more. There, now I've got them both. B, 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 B. If I want, and I'm on a keyboard, instead of using the mouse, I can use the number seven for the note B. And it's quite responsive this way. Um, So this is a way, there is ways to split your screen on an iPad, to script, split your screen on a Chromebook, and they're explained in the online learning module um, in the general section um, with month outlines and tech tips. There's three videos that one of our teachers, uh, Christina Bourne, made for you and you can share them with your students if you wish. Um, but for me, anyways, on my desktop computer, it's very easy just to split a tab off and then I can play. So here's the virtual xylophone and then I could do the Just A song and play it on my xylophone.
I could uh, read and sing um, a melody with A and B and play it on the xylophone. Now I would like the kids to compose their own melody with A and B. And to do this, they should choose level five. And I could use the notes D, E, G, A, B, but right now I want to limit my students to just the notes that they're reading. Oops, the B didn't stick. I want it to stay there. B, A, B, A, A. And I can play it. And when I've got my melody to the point that I like it, I can play it on my virtual xylophone. And my suggestion is that the kids actually write it down on a piece of paper, draw their staff lines, write the notes in. That's all really good practice for them to do it. So that is the staff composition. Here's a sample composition that I had done and I could play it on the virtual xylophone, but that will be a, it's not a substitute for playing the recorder, but it will teach some of the same skills that children would be learning if you were able to do recorders in this strange and crazy year. I'm going to show you where in the learning modules in general, month outlines and tech tips. And here are the videos by Christina Bourne to show you how to split your screen. It did take me some practice on my iPad, but I did figure it out. Um, so you'll have to experiment with it before you try this with your students. But it's one way that you can have kids see a melody and play a virtual instrument. The other way, of course, that you can do this is to screen share the melody so the kids are looking at the melody and then they play it on their, on their virtual instruments. Um, and if you're in person, you project the melody, the kids on their devices will play it on their virtual instruments. So enjoy this lesson. I hope this works out well. I'd be really interested to know how this does work for you. Um, you can always email me, denise at musicplay.ca. And this will be continuing the series of lessons on the history of jazz this week on Louis Armstrong. And we'll be looking at When the Saints and another one of his famous pieces, um, the Basin Street Blues. And then we'll be doing the uh, lesson on the blues and doing a cup game to back porch blues. So this is a fun lesson. In the supporting resources, you have a lesson guide for you as teacher and you have a worksheet for students. I've given the worksheet in the images so that if you choose simply to discuss the questions, you can, but the videos are very comprehensive. The videos that Bonnie uh, Rossa and Brad Keller have created, very comprehensive, and they do a good job of doing vocabulary as an intro, and then the bulk of the lesson, and then they review. It may seem redundant to us, but for kids, they need to hear this over and over again. So here's the lesson questions for discussion. discussion. The listening assessment is based on St. Louis Blues. So we have a safe share link that takes you to the St. Louis uh, Blues. If for some reason the link doesn't work for you, just Google St. Louis Blues, Louis Armstrong, and you will get to that uh, that um, you'll get to it, the same video or a similar video. I also want the kids to view uh, Louis Armstrong's When the Saints because that is a classic and it's also a great reading song. So have the kids name the notes for this. There's a worksheet. If you can print out, if you're in person, you can print it. If you're doing it by Zoom, you might just want to have them name the notes. And then we want them to try playing it on a virtual keyboard. Now I'm on the classic site. I wanted to jump over to the beta site because I like the layout of this actually a lot better. If I go to grade five, I go to lesson 18 and I go down to where I was. Everything is bigger and it's e easier to see. So here is the note naming exercise. And when I open the virtual keyboard, it opens in a new tab and I can pull it off to the side. And then I can organize so that I can see the notes.
and I can see my keyboard. So I know C, E, F, G, C, E, F, G. I can play while I'm watching it. And it's just a matter of getting it far enough apart that I can see all my notes and I can play the keyboard at the same time. So it is possible. If you go into general, month outlines and tech tips, there are three videos there by one of our music play teachers showing you how you can teach kids to split screen on an iPad, on a Chromebook, on a desktop. It's easy on my desktop. Um, I found it more difficult on my iPad. You might be more of a techie than me and find it easier to do. But the virtual keyboard is here, the piece is here. And then we go on to Jazz Lesson 4, the blues. And again, it follows the same format. Vocabulary at the beginning, bulk of the lesson, and then a review. And you can either discuss the, re the questions that follow, or you can have kids do the worksheet if you're able to print, if they're able to print. Um, you can always put worksheets like this in a Google slide as the background have the kids type their answers in and send it back to you. That's another way of doing it. We have the listening example here. This is Bessie Smith singing. It's a great example. When it rains five days in the sky. Okay. And again, if you can't find the listening example, Backwater Blues by Beth Bessie Smith, just Google and you'll find a replacement video. And then we have a cup game demo of Back Porch Blues. This is a music play song and the cup game is fun and it's simple. And so you can use the audio track and you play a cup game. It's even more fun. These kids here, uh, the first pattern was just ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, ta, pick, pass. And now, of course, you don't pass. You just hold on to the cup. Um, and it has a little swing in it because it's not straight eights. But the second pattern was one that the kids made up themselves. And it was one, two, three, four, five, six, pick, pass. And you'll see that in the video. But it's fun to have your students make up their own patterns and use that as the B section. They will really enjoy this activity. I've had great success with this with fourth through uh, middle school, making up their own cup games. They quite enjoy it. So that's an overview of grade five, lesson 18, January week three, uh, music play online and beta dot music play online is our new website where we have a little bit nicer formatting for these lessons. and we're continuing with our history of jazz study in this lesson. I'm currently on musicplayonline.com. This is the original site or the classic. I'm going to take you to our rebuild, which is beta.musicplayonline.com. This site will be replacing the classic um, by next September. We'll have it replaced. So the lesson overview is here and we have the objectives, we're going to learn about Louis Armstrong. Sometimes he said his name Louis and sometimes he said his name Louis. So you can choose either pronunciation. But there's a lesson guide and a worksheet. The worksheet is for the students, lesson guide for teachers. And the blues lesson guide is for teachers here, students here, and there's a note naming worksheet for when the saints. So we're starting with the review of Why Bamba. We have a lovely performance of this um, in the recording. Why Bamba, why? It's a wedding song from Zimbabwe, and the reason we included this is in the Roots of Jazz, it talked about how jazz was a combination of spirituals, African songs, and it came together to form this new form of music. So this is the African part of it. So Lesson 3, History of Jazz. This is by Bonnie Rossa and Brad Keller. They start with their lessons with vocabulary going over the vocabulary that students will need to understand the video, then the, the lesson proper, and then there's a review of the lesson at the end. And so when you come to discussing the answers to the questions, you can show that to them before they uh, watch the video. 
but it's helpful. Uh, the amount of repetition that they do in these videos is very helpful for the kids to get a really solid understanding. The listening assignment in these lessons is this is going to be on the St. Louis Blues. And so we have a safe share link to take you to a performance of the St. Louis Blues. If the link doesn't work for you, Google the St. Louis Blues, Louis Armstrong or Louis Armstrong, and you will find an alternate video. I've also suggested adding that you watched a performance of When the Saints because this is such an iconic piece. And again, if the link doesn't work for you, Google it. But um, I want them to do When the Saints because we can do some reading and literacy, music literacy work on this piece. Have them name the notes in the piece. And then the next activity is to play it on a virtual instrument. Now, I am on a desktop computer. If I pull this tab off to the side, I can see my notes and I can see my keyboard at the same time. So I am going to play C, E, F, G, C. And I actually can on the keyboard now use the number pad. So one, three, four, five will get me C, E, F, G. And it, the, using the number pad has reduced the lag time in it. So this is a good way to get kids actually playing instruments in this strange year when playing recorders isn't working and many other instruments are not allowed. So that's the virtual xylophone. Then we start the blues lesson, and it's the same format, vocabulary, body of the lesson, and a review at the end. And you've got a worksheet that you can have the students complete. If you use uh, Google Classroom, you can put worksheets like this in the background of a Google slide, and then the students can type the answers into it. Or you can simply use it as discussion questions and discuss it. The listening example is Backwater Blues by Bessie Smith. And so this will be a, a safe share link that will take you to that example. And again, if the safe share link doesn't work for some reason, when it rains, you can in the um, Google the Backwater Blues, Bessie night. Smith, and you'll probably come across the same recording. When it rain, that is a great example. Now we have an example from Music Play Online with a cup game. So you watch the kids demo first. And the first part of the pattern is ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, ta, pick, pass. In COVID times, we are not going to pass. Ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, ta, pick up, set down. Ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, ta, pick up, sit down. And the B section for this piece was one that the students came up with. And it's really cute. They do out, out, up, up, cross, cross, pick, pass. It's a little bit of the Macarena. And the kids were the ones that thought of that. Your students will enjoy coming up with their own cup game patterns. So if uh, what I will typically ask kids to do is make up a pattern while I count to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And seven should be the pickup. Eight is the set down or the pass if before COVID. So one, two, three, four, five, six, pick up, set down. And just repeat your counting four or five times till the kids have time to figure out a pattern that they can use. So here's the audio track. And it's a fun piece that your students are going to enjoy. So this seems like a lot of material, but some teachers have one 45 minute lesson. Some teachers have two or three 30 minute lessons. And so we have enough material here that you, um, you will for sure be able to fill that 45 minute lesson and a little bit extra besides. So thank you for joining me. This is middle school lesson 18. We're continuing with the history of jazz series of lessons. I hope you enjoy.